Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union. And so we have hopefully, well, we've got FBC who are members today. Um, Karen who come, but so is Fiji TV. Vanuatu is VBTC is a member, and of course, the local um, television station TV One. So thank you for coming. Welcome to this workshop. It's about how to grow your audience using Facebook Live. And of course, your presenter is the wonderful Miss Cartini Arafat. Yay! She, yeah, 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 yeah. I have to react to that. You do, you, know, you, know, you, you just can't have your back to it. <laughs> and Cartini originally trained as an accountant, but wanting a bit more excitement in her life. She, she auditioned for Malaysia's top television magazine show that was targeted at youth and young women called 3R. Now that was a while ago, yeah, but Kartini became both a household name and hooked on the possibilities of telling stories as a reporter and a producer. And last year, as she said, she founded the Bleak Media, um, which pioneered, this is really important, independent live streaming television in Malaysia. Her digital channel produces unique and personality driven content using Facebook Live as a platform. So this is her business and it's all on Facebook. So it's an exciting development for broadcasters in the Pacific, of course, where Facebook is everything. She is here to teach you all that she has learned in the past year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. hear about how to do it. Cartini talks about monetization. I don't know that this audience is, they'll be interested, but they'll be interested as journalists as opposed to interested as people who need that money. Mm -hmm. But you can tell your employers, this is how it's done. This is how it's monetized. to make the most of Facebook Live and give her tips for creating content on Facebook Live. So you can sort of consider how you use it for your broadcaster and then you'll get to practice your skills. And of course that original degree is still useful as Teeny manages the finances of her brave and exciting startup. You right? Yeah. yeah we thank, God everything, thank God everything is being paid for my my meals and all that. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you so much Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, Wendy is the new director of news at ABU. So at some point or other, she will also be um, intercepting whenever that's necessary. Okay. Do do we want to have the door closed, or is the air conditioning all right for everybody? Yeah. Okay. So wonderful. I am so honored to be here. I flew to more than 24 hours to get here. It was Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, Singapore, Auckland, Auckland, Apia. And I'm doing the same route when I go back. So, um, yes, yeah. so hence, you know, it, 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 it's a journey. But nevertheless, I'm so excited to share my experiences and uh, about the Facebook Live with all of you. So before we go ahead, so I think, um, I think we've done that with me. I, I know that you have spent some of your time with each other yesterday, but we just want to do a bit of a connection with each other because we are going to spend almost uh, till evening with each other. So the best thing is to probably get to know each other first in the beginning and get to know more at the end. So it's going to be a very laid back interactive session so I would really appreciate feedback as well. Just ask me anything at some point. You don't even need to raise your hand. It's just like, you know, did you want Yeah, I'm fine with that because it's such a small intimate group so I think we can afford to do that and it is a workshop. And I always feel that, you know, for me to sustain throughout the day, it's just not about me talking, because I get tired talking for, for six hours or seven hours, right? So we need to hear your voice as well. Okay, so now, I think uh, there's about seven people or eight, including myself. So why don't we just do a bit of hello, hello to each other, okay? Uh, if you could... Uh, probably I can see that maybe 
find a partner. So I'm just going to decide because we have like odd numbers on each table. If yourself and yourself together, okay, and you and we know each other so well. Okay, so I don't know one of those two. Okay, so then maybe your, you, Renee and Coroy, yeah? All right, okay. And then Michael and Wendy? Yes. Yes. Okay, and Angelita with me. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, what I want you guys to do is tell your partner. Uh, I know you put on your name tag, your, your name, what you do, okay, what you do, what you, your organization do, and what's that one unique thing about yourself, okay, and what you have learned so far at this conference, okay, very simple, straightforward, like icebreaker, you know, let's, yeah, because I don't think we had that opportunity when you're sitting at the conference. So do that, and then swap partners, we'll do this for about three minutes, okay, let's go. Now, uh, I've put on the post-it notes on your table, okay, so I, I would like to know, this is also for the benefit of me and also for the benefit of the group, uh, I want you to write down what you hope to achieve uh, in today's workshop, okay? It can be a one post-it note, one thought, like to know more about technical, for example, right? So that's one. So if you have three or four, then in a different post-it note. So I'll give you about three and a half minutes to note down your thoughts on what you hope to achieve in this workshop today, okay? All right, let's do that. So this is what we'll be doing throughout the day. So I think we have already said hello. That's me and that's Wendy. Yeah, I hope I do justice to Wendy. Okay. So versions uh, changes depending. So that was like pretty late yesterday night. So you know, uh, I think I did all right. Okay, so this is what we did. We did a day hellos. Okay, I figure out Salofa is hello. How are you? Because I googled it. And I saw it at the ATM machine. It says Talofa, you know, and also some t shirts. So I thought uh, it's a name of a place <laughs> until I Google it. So we did already the sharing, okay, with each other. So, and also we've gone through what you hope to achieve from the beautiful post it notes over there. Okay, so, and when we uh, finish the roadmap and when you're a bit more comfortable and done with your tea break, we are going to go and dive into why Facebook, all right? Why Facebook? I think some of the reasons are pretty obvious, but when we do it in a discussion, we probably have some other whys from other people. So let's explore that. Okay, I guess initially that was supposed to happen there. So what happened is that we have moved the, so it became here, it became here, and then it became here, the tea break, okay, and I was right, it's muffin, <laughs> yeah, imagine that, I didn't know that they're going to serve muffin, so it's, it, man, it manifested, whatever I imagined yesterday manifested, so she had your coffee with your muffin today, okay, then we go to the Y, alright. Okay, and then um, when he's going to share some examples, yeah, and um, KOLs, key opinion leaded Facebook uh, samples uh, from her network. Okay, she's going to do that sharing. And then after that, I will share with you why have I moved, uh, that's me by the way, <laughs> from a traditional platform into a digital platform. And what, and how was the transition like? Uh, from working in a radio station, not a radio station, I worked for three radio stations, 
Uh, I started my media career in, uh, on, in production and TV, and then I moved to three radio stations, and the last one was a youth, of, youth radio station back in Malaysia. So then I'll share with you the transition and how that is working out uh, with me right now, okay? And then after that, we'll go through some tips on Facebook Live, you know, what's, uh, what should we do before, uh, during and you know uh, and a lot of people forget the moment they switched off the Facebook Live and that's it but there is some things that can be acquired uh, from the post Facebook Live you know so we'll go through that and then we'll look at some gadgets software and hardware which you can easily use uh, to host your own Facebook content which is then at a level where it is broadcast quality yeah, because I know you can just take and go to your Facebook and live now, but then the audio might be muffled, the, you know, you might not have good lighting, you know. So, but this is, we want to make it look more professional. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll share that. And then after that, so we'll get into groups and this is when you will discuss a content which we'll do in a group together. Uh, what, uh, we, will, we will do a pilot, we'll do a simulation. So we'll discuss a topic or something that probably you have thought about uh, and then, you know, we will shoot that, okay, hopefully, live. Okay, so that's the whole agenda for today, okay. Uh, any question? Clear? That's the most creative agenda I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't like boardrooms agenda. They give you can use the boardroom. No, So please refer to page number three and <laughs> so yeah, I mean uh, yeah, so that's that's what's happening. So now we've done that. So let's look at why Facebook. Alright, so why Facebook Live? So this is uh, this is where I mentioned that it's going to be interactive. So what I want you to do is, I think we've lost Petra, so I might it's alright. Maybe when he wants to be in this group. Okay, I want you to discuss among you why you think Facebook Live is the way to go forward. What are the pros of choosing Facebook Live or any live? Okay, any life. I'm saying I'm talking about Facebook because most people have Facebook. But live function, you can do it on IG Store, IG Live. You could do it on YouTube as well. It's the same thing. Okay, it's just a live platform. But what do you think are the pros and cons of doing this live as an alternative broadcast platform for your content? All right. So I will give each team paper, and you can use the. Uh, color magic thing on the table. You will have about seven minutes to do this. Seven minutes, okay? So I'm just gonna fix this. All right. So you can you can have additional. No. <laughs> So, I think uh, I think we've got pretty pretty good discussion. Uh, so now let's see what each group have to offer. So maybe a rep from different group can share uh, within this uh, within this room. Or what have you guys, you know, find out? A, a lot of these activities are very journalistic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, asking the right question. Uh, uh, getting to know better, so this is a very journalistic uh, method. So, uh, anybody wants to start first? Yeah, okay, Renee, okay. what do you have for us? Cool, so Al, uh, we've got a list of some of our pros and cons. So, um, um, pros was it's free, um, audience, that's where the people is, Facebook um, is where, is it over 3 billion? 3 billion people globally are on Facebook. Um, it's instant, it's immediate, um, it's entertaining, um, it's uh, visually enticing with the photos, the videos, um, it's democratic, accessible, anyone can do, anyone can have access to, to Facebook if you have the internet and um, data. Um, one of our um, 
um, big cons that we found um, was the example of the Christchurch massacre, where how it was you know, um, shared and viewed quite hundreds of thousands of times. Um, and we spoke a little bit about um, Jacinda doing what she was trying to lobby other governments to try and get Facebook Live to put in safety, just so that it was over an hour, I think, that it was um, broadcast of all live streams on Facebook. Um, pros, engaging, cons, lack of access to low income people. Um, yeah, and strong impact and, and, and yeah, strong impact and the influence that Facebook has. Yeah. And you get to share, like and engagement, so it just gives people the power to I like this, I love this, I hate this, I don't like this, this makes me cry. Um, yeah. All right, thank you. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Nice stuff. Um, okay, so how about this group? Yeah? Do you want to taste it over there? Just behind me. Yeah. 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 Did you put it, you know, do you have enough? I think we need one more. Yeah, here. Thank you. story about um, a, in Malaysia uh, uh, because of the cyberbullying a girl in one of the rural states uh, in Malaysia committed suicide and actually she faced she posted that on IG story okay and she was at the verge of a tall building and she actually posted and said should I D or should I L so it was done on a post on a on a poll Okay, so netizen, a lot of people choose D. I don't even know what it means. And then after when the news came out, so the moment that was uh, 
uh, uh, posted higher than Lael, which is lit, she actually jumped off the building. So, and I think uh, a lot of questions are coming out in terms of making it regulated. So, and there's also that conversation about we go on digital because we democratize the content so that everybody can do can watch it, and then because people are moving to digital as well because it's unregulated because you know otherwise the traditional TV and radio it's it's very subjected to a lot of uh, do's and don'ts and some of the medium are propagandas of government so you don't really get the truth mm -hmm. and you know and journalism is supposed to be objective you're supposed to tell it what it is so this whole conversation about if you make it regulated and what's the difference mm -hmm. between the traditional platform which is the TV and radio as compared to digital. So, and, and because digital is going so fast, uh, even in Malaysia, uh, you know, some, some, some certain things are not in place yet because, you know, you just, it, it's in place when something happens. Yeah, you can really anticipate. So the digital um, uh, content uh, is then being uh, regulated by the local uh, it's called MCMC, Multimedia Commission of our country, and they look at the content. So, similar to whatever that goes on the broadcast, you know, the, the, the normal don'ts, you know, don't talk about anything controversial, you know, no vulgarity, uh, and all that applies for the content compliance online. So that's, that's, that's what's happening in, in Malaysia. And I think there's some countries that already have a lot more in-depth digital uh, regulation at uh, uh, in place. And I think for countries like Fiji and Samoa, where you're coming from, as you embrace the digital landscape, this will come up as well. Mm -hmm. So then you probably have to start thinking about how uh, to do risk management. You know, as much as we're excited about a new thing, it also comes up with uh, other things. Mm -hmm. But as long as we embrace it correctly, and I think in terms of content, like um, you mentioned about the fake news, you know, the cyberbullying, it actually comes down to a human ethic and just knowing the right, what, what's the right thing to do. Because if you put in like a 300 page of regulation of what you can do on digital, but there's no enforcement or people are not naturally not inclined to it, you will still do malicious news, right? But if the journalist or the writer or the contributor have a very strong ethic and values, then it is back to the human values of, should I put this out? Should I command like that? Mm -hmm. You know, it goes back to our basic being. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Although we say that people can say anything because, you know, people love to command, but it goes back into what are the teachings within the family values or the education that the person should already know as a human being, we know. I mean, you can't have a police downstairs watching what you do. It's, ha, ah, shouldn't be wearing that color. You know, it's like you just know what's the norm and what's not. So, so that's some of the argument that is being faced because it goes back to your discretion on how it should be presented, okay? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Just need my glasses. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So oh, that's not okay. So I before we go on to um, Wendy uh, session, I just also want to share and further uh, close and you know we emphasize on the Facebook looking at the positive aspect of it. So I have my. Can I, can I put it here? Can you see it here? Okay. You can Google this. You'll find this. Uh, this is the image emerging trend of uh, live videos. So when I say live videos, it's not only contained to Facebook. It could be on other platforms and especially the more popular ones are YouTube and IGs at this point. So. According to Google, 80% would rather watch a video uh, and get engaged 
uh, with a brand rather than within a blog. Okay. It's so sad that our, I don't know, I, I don't want to say about other countries, but when I relate back to Malaysia, uh, people don't like to read anymore, you know, so they prefer to watch videos. So maybe that's good for content creator to create videos. 90% of consumers says video helps them make a purchase decision. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to buy something online and you see a nice dress, but if somebody's modeling it like that, but if somebody does this, you're more likely to buy. Yeah? Okay. So video builds trust because you can see the person talking rather than a face. So you know if I put if I post my photo like that and say join Kartini for her Facebook live workshop. Rather than me saying, Hi, my name is Kartini, I'd like to invite all of you. So it's a lot more engaging because people can see me in flash. So and I've done that, I've done the a test on that. Uh, I did a workshop in Kuala Lumpur and I posted a, 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 a poster first and the poster doesn't have my face on it. So it shows the poster, video making workshop and I put a mobile phone there which I took uh, the image from stock image. <laughs> okay, um, I think no one signed up. And then I did another poster with myself, just a nice smiley face to show them how wonderful of a trainer I am. <laughs> Maybe three people sign up. Okay, so now I got worried because the, the workshop date is closer and the organizer told me like, okay, why don't we do the video now? So I did the video and finally the workshop was filled with 25 people. Yeah. So it, it, it was, it was, okay, I don't know whether they were last minute, <laughs> you know, towards the end, but from three to 25, there were just, two days after I posted the video on my IG, on my IG, okay? So that worked because it built trust. Uh, so, and if you go on Google, if your content is a video, you know when you Google your name mm -hmm. and then your name will come out on what come out on the first page, yeah? So most likely now, what will come out is a video instead of a write-up or instead of a website article. Or if your website contains a video, 53% of it, that it will show up in the first page. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to aim for. Yeah. Hello, Olya. I'm just taking photos. OK. <laughs> OK. Try to see and you will notice that your mobile loves video and 90% globally. This is a global research. I think they did it. Uh, Google got it from their insights. Uh, people actually watch 90% of the content. Okay, so I guess we have no choice but to do video now mm -hmm. that it's all presented here. Uh, and more facts. <coughs> this is more specific for live videos. So this could be more generic to like videos, like you know, if you do a drama or a produce content, you know, but this is live, okay? Mm -hmm. It shows that in the coming year, the trend, 133% of growth for live videos outpacing other type of video content, okay? And I think this is good news because to do live videos is so much more easier and less work than to do a produced video because you don't need to edit, you don't need to put the effects, you know, like, you know, it's just if you start in, you know, and stop, and that's the duration of it, okay? Uh, and for news, for newsrooms, 56% view live content for breaking news because it's the fastest. Because mm -hmm. TV stations cannot, or radio stations cannot get the news as fast mm -hmm. as if it is on live, yeah? Especially if the reporter's there <laughs> on, on, on location, yeah? All right, so... Uh, and 70% people uh, watch live videos on FB, okay, as compared to other platforms like IG or YouTube. 70% of audience are willing to buy an event or a concert ticket after viewing it live. Mm -hmm. So this is why advertisers are going to live content Facebook. And this has caused a lot of, uh, because I come from a commercial station, so the commercial station relies a lot of revenues on advertisers. So they're not getting that, they're not hitting the target anymore as compared to previous years. So I can share with you that previously, uh, say I am an advertiser. So I have like, I'm selling muffin. Are you done with the muffin? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm selling muffin. So maybe in the last five years, I have uh, say 10,000 talas 
to promote my muffin, right? So I go by, maybe I put 3,000 for television commercial, 3,000 for radio commercial, and 3,000 and whatever remaining of it for newspaper, yeah? So, well, 10,000 is shared by three platforms. But now, the digital is coming in, so what I'm saying is like, I don't know how many people watch my muffin or you know buy my muffin or or read about my muffin in the print but I can advertise on my Facebook because a lot of my customers are not on Facebook so they say okay digital Facebook YouTube and IG you get 5,000 and then TV radio and print you get 5,000 so that 5,000 now is shared with three platforms and digital gets its own budget never happened before in the last five, six years, but it's happening not more now. And we anticipate that in the coming years, that 50-50 will probably be 60-40, 70-30, 80-20, 90-10, and the station's just going to have to downsize and either move to digital or close. I can tell you that two radio stations, I work at, <coughs> I work at three radio stations, two of it closed down already. Yeah. For some, yeah, some of our revenue and yeah. Okay, any questions? Are we good? Um, yeah? Traditional platform, and then you want to do advertising. I mean, like on Facebook, like how would you avoid one can cannibalizing the other? How do you strike a balance? How do we strike a balance between the, traditional yeah, platforms? Yeah, with the new digital not cannibalizing, if, or do you have to just yeah, move everything? I totally understand, yeah, because, you know, it's survival of the fittest, right? So it's like, you know, which child do I kill first? Because, you know, I've got this wonderful child and it's like, oh, do I get rid of it? Right? Yeah, but some companies, I can tell you that in Malaysia, uh, the broadcasters are downsizing. So uh, they migrate? Yeah, so they, mi they migrate to digital. They migrate, so they have uh, the same content that goes on the same content as some original content goes onto your digital platform, okay? And some of the content that they have, say, it's a longer content and they just take some bits and pieces of it, they goes on your digital. But what I can see that uh, striking that balance is very tough. Oh, the landscape right now, I'm sure it is globally as well, but in Malaysia, that big station is now going smaller and their digital, they're investing a lot more on their digital. Yeah, so instead of like buying more transmitters, instead of uh, putting on more frequencies at different towers, they will spend money on clouds, servers, because that's where the capex is uh, compared to the TV or the radio. So yeah. Yeah, basically, just, that's where the audience is more... Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, there is a dilemma for broadcasters that, you know, like say you've employed 10,000 people to operate your station, but half of it now has become redundant because you don't use the same camera anymore because people are using phones and you don't have the big MCP studio because I can show you that later on, I can show you I actually broadcast in a living room. So if previously I spent about, we spent about, I didn't, it's not my money, we spent about <laughs> building up a studio, a radio studio, it cost us less than 10,000 ringgit to set up everything. So it's a big difference, it's a big difference. So, so what do I do with uh, our technician, what do I do? So, uh, it's a lot of uh, retrenchment exercise, downscaling, and and because there's this revolution in the IR 4.0, yeah. So it's either peop either if you are in a job that you're doing right now, it's no longer relevant. You have to upscale. And we noticed that I personally noticed that actually the toughest part is the change of mindset. 
it's a change of mindsets. Like, you know, you've got people like, oh, I used to do this for 20 years, and now I have to use a mobile phone to shoot. It's like, it's, it's unbelievable. And like, before this, uh, and I started in production in 2002 uh, for that TV program. I used to have about 20 people on set. So, a cameraman, a producer, a PA, uh, a makeup artist, a wardrobe, people who does catering, and then we have the lighting, the gaffer, uh, who else, uh, you, you name it. So, you know, sometimes you have two, because, you know, yeah. So they have like about 10 to 15 people on a set. But in today's landscape, we just need two. Sometimes you just need one. So the talent, the host, is the cameraman, she's the audio person, <laughs> and then she does everything and then she posts. It's a bit, it, uh, it's not ideal, I think two, two in a team is good. One if you just have two, if you're just there, you know, it happened before, right? And so, so there's a lot of change there. Um, so eventually, I think, it's going to be going more towards the digital. Uh, space. Yeah. Okay. I might have a question. So, like here in Samoa, um, it's very traditional still. You know, very traditional TV is still the number one. So even when it comes to advertising, so we have one like notice show on TV one, and it's called Lully, and they uh, it's like a notice for, and it's just like pretty much printed notice of this person's birthday, this person's funeral, but it makes almost fifty percent of the revenue for our TV station. Yeah. You know, so I want to see you know, like the transition to take it from this platform to also have it online. Yeah. yeah so, you know, like, yeah, they just made me think about You should. If it, mm. uh, uh, obituary, right? Yeah. Yeah, people actually, 50% of people, people watch that. Yeah, it's wonderful content. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. It's easy. Do you know, it's easy to spread that. So, so, so optimize it further. So if you're already making money for your TV, because you know, then you put it online, you charge a separate rate. Mm -hmm. You don't charge, you know, if you, if, if it, people pay for that? Yeah, it's like pay? $5,000 for one. One one Yeah, one. Okay, so then you said 5000 to post uh, this news for you on TV. But you know, you don't, you don't, because you package it. Mm -hmm. Package it so it's like it becomes 7,500 and you get it on our Facebook, our IG, and our YouTube. Mm -hmm. How about that? And you know, I, I, I think that is yeah. additional yeah. 2,000 more. <laughs> and also, for you, when the digital is bigger than television, which isn't yet, yeah. but whenever it happens, then you've so got yeah. your online audience already built in, your online advertising is already there, and you just switch it in terms of cost. Mm. Less for television now, more for online. Yeah, especially for our Facebook, we had like the last time I checked was eighty six thousand followers. And that's that's, that's for how, how many in the country? Um, hundred and sixty, one hundred and eighty five thousand. So, all, but, so you, you, you got eighty six out of one hundred eighty five. So that's almost yeah. half. Yeah. That's just for online. And that's a good thing because you can say, you can say, I mean, although it's not entirely true because you have to look back at your Facebook insights, but you say, you know, 80,000, 86,000 people are actually reading this news. Mm -hmm. But then the, your client is going to say, how many people are watching it on TV? Can you say? Yeah, no, you can't. You can't, right? Because you don't know the data unless you do an audience research, mm -hmm. yeah. which is like how many people watch. I don't know about here, but in Malaysia, how they do the audience research is to put a black box randomly in different houses. Yes. So say for example, uh, yeah, is it the same? Nissan research. Nissan research, yeah. So they put it like, so okay, so I put it in your house and you live in this housing area. So you represent 10,000 other people in this community. So which means because they say you live in the same area, so your your thinking, your mindset might be the same and lifestyle. So can you imagine? So if you watch uh, one channel, they ten, which means ten thousand other people in your community is watching it. They tap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So but that's how Nielsen does it. That's how Nielsen does it. And I won't. I won't go into the radio research. Yeah. It's it's manually done. Yeah. I'm sorry I have to interrupt. You know, yeah. Olya keeps coming yes, in. Yes, keeps coming yes, in. The yes, reason yes. she keeps coming in 
is as a handover to VBTC yes. at about five past twelve. And right, I was right. thinking that maybe I'd get my presentation in beforehand. Right. So it's up to you. Yeah, to yeah. so I was about to hand over to you. I, I think we can because yeah. I think you're just so brilliant that yeah, I'll just get yeah. mine out of the way. Okay, it's enough. a small one that might answer your yeah. question. Yeah, okay. But other yeah. than that, let's focus yeah, on this. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. There's still a lot, it's a lot of disruption, you know, uh, but, uh, we, <laughs> but it's okay. We are flexible. We, we are, are flexible. Yeah. It's all right. So we'll just, we'll just flow through. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so flow through. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's fine, it's flexible, no worries. Okay, now we'll your computer. Yeah. You're going to have to put this in. Sure, it's only sure. got one presentation sure. on it, sure. and all I need is a clicker. Sure. And what this is, this is from MTV. This is their experience. So this is our friend, and he is our friend. He's a wonderful fellow, Scott Warday. And this is what he did with MTV. Um, sorry, when he did, you want both inside the clicker? Oh, no, 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 sorry. This is just this first one. Yeah. This is what he did. Uh, he started in March, end of March. So we've got April, we've got May, we've got June, and most of July. He's only been doing this before. In fact, it took about a month to get it started. So it's three months of a digital strategy. And that's all I really want to tell you. I just want to tell you his little story. Uh, in what he's done in three months, because I think it is a really good example of the Pacific. Look, the Pacific mightn't have infrastructure, it mightn't have people, many people, it might have black boxes, but what the Pacific has is smart people who can move fast, because it's small. And I reckon Scott and the MTV team really epitomise that. So I just want you to take, yeah, just, just take his, you know, we talked about leadership yesterday. I think he, Scott and the people at MTV are really showing great leadership and just showing how it's done. Okay, He'll go. share it with you. Do you want me to help you with the clicking? Yeah, yeah. I can click. Oh, you can, can click. click. Okay. I'm just right. really going to where I'm clicking with. Click. So it okay. goes down, yeah. Hey. My friend, Scott Wade. Senior television reporter, a trainer, prolific blogger, based in Lane, Papua New Guinea. His broadcast <coughs> on TV is an Asia Vision member, and he was part of our coordinators' workshop uh, back in Jakarta in March. And he went up home from there, determined to change the way MTV. I'm not here. I'm not. Just pretend I'm not here. Went about putting the news to it. I always look down, and that's not how I should do it. Um, it was the multi-platform training workshop that was the impetus for Scott to push for his broadcaster to totally change the way they present news. And he told me the presentation on creating news content that can be adapted for all platforms, multi-platform journalism, and the Mojo workshop, the two went hand in hand, were just huge, had a huge, huge impact on him. And so he took the knowledge back to PNG and they applied it. With the backing of his CEO, Sheena Hughes, Scott and news boss Neville Choi, bought a bit of mojo equipment. They needed a bit. They needed a couple of gimbals um, to get some good pictures. They needed some, some legs, some sticks, especially for mobile phones. They needed a bit of adaption, not much, hardly any cost. Uh, and they held a workshop to show staff what the future would look like. Digital first and as much live as possible. Sorry. Now initially, some of the staff weren't convinced. They questioned, and I think this really goes to the heart of it, whether people in PNG could afford the data. Well, actually, can they? But MTV's approach was that they needed to prepare for the day in a couple of years when costs are down and competition is increased. And they believe that if they don't move now, MTV just won't have a foothold in the market. So they moved earlier, before anyone was ready, before the staff were ready, but they just said, we have to do this. So within a couple of weeks, hopefully this one comes, yes. 
This was on their Facebook page. It was MTV's first live breaking news story when the finance minister resigned in April. And by May, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill was fighting for his leadership when he held an impromptu news conference. That's it. After a particularly inspired piece of parliamentary plotting. MTV played it live into Facebook, this news conference, at the same time as playing it live into the bulletin that was going to air. And that approach has continued since. If it goes out on Facebook Live, yeah. they also put it on their traditional platform. They don't waste it. That's what Māori platform's about. If you do something for one platform, either Facebook Live, it goes to traditional, do something for traditional, put it out on Facebook Live, and they do. They put their main news, whether it's, you know, whether it's a breaking story or not, their main news is on Facebook every night. So people have it in their, in their hands if they've got data on their way home. If not, they, they can still get it. Now, O'Neill didn't last long, but MTV has continued to cover his fall and rise. Uh, his fall and the rise of Prime Minister James Marape among many, many stories since. And look, the figures speak for themselves. Stats show MTV is the top news source now in PNG. Its Facebook and its online offerings are quoted by the BBC and The Guardian internationally. That didn't happen before. But because they're on this live platform, uh, you know, the, the web is just amazing. They might be in PNG, but people are seeing them all around the world. And when you've got a diaspora that is all around the world, you want to serve them. Facebook can do it. People can be in London and they can get their news back. Okay, it's 24 hours on the wrong, you know, 12 hours on the wrong side of the day, but that's irrelevant. If you're a Papua New Guinean and you're in London, you wouldn't know what happened back home. They get it on Facebook Live. Um, their Facebook likes have risen from 90,000 to 113,000. And their Facebook shares are averaging 150 per item that rise to 1,000 when the Prime Minister's involved. So that just shows how people are engaging with what they're putting out. It's the news that they put out on their website. It's the news that they put out on their television. But it's Facebook that's giving them uh, the figures and therefore the engagement, and therefore the money that they need. Scott tells me that these are amazing results in just three months of a digital first strategy. He says MTV's ambitious aim is to have 250,000 followers by December. That's only four months away. This is out of a possible 400,000 in the entire country. And look, at Asia Vision, our aim is to support all our smaller broadcasters as they work towards a similar strategy. We see, you heard yesterday the figures, 50% of people in the Pacific are under the age of 20. Connectivity is rapidly improving, PNG is about to get that cable, Solomon Islands is about to get the cable, it will transform this area of the world and it's only a few months away. You know, you, to me, you almost have to get on board now. I'm not sure about Samoa, it's not brilliant here, mm. but the competition for what's happening in Solomons and PNG could well have a flow-on effect to the government here who sees that if they want to keep Samoa relevant, they need to improve connectivity. Mm. It, can only, it can only help. So, the future is digital. We've heard it, we're here to talk about it. I do hope that you implement it at your broadcasters.
the question that Michael asked. Yeah, asked because Michael was asking about, about traditional yeah. and okay. online. Mm. And that's why I stopped there and really yeah. went through it. Yeah. it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's content. It's content. It goes on every single platform. Mm. Traditional, online and Facebook Live. Uh, There's three. Network. Yeah, it's called multi-platform. And if you had other platforms, it would go there too. If you're on Twitter, you do something for Twitter. If you're, if you're into podcasts, you do a podcast as well. So the one piece of content goes on everything. But if you're, you'd have three platforms, wouldn't you? You'd have traditional, online, and you could get Facebook. Do you, do you really have Facebook happening? Uh, we are about to launch. Uh, we just signed up... Uh, couple of contents with these local sporting bodies, netball and rugby league, which is quite huge in PNG. So that's what we're looking towards developing is Facebook uh, Live for the rugby leagues, for isolated places in the country. That would be amazing. Yeah. And, and the figures, the thing about Facebook is it's got its analytics, yes. it's got its figures. It's the, the reports that advertisers want. Yeah, yeah they do. And you can't get it from traditional. No, and even online it's hard, you can. But Facebook actually has those analytics, and so you can prove to your advertisers. And rugby will go right off. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's just so good. Yes. So I hope you monetize it. Listen to the monetizing <laughs> ideas <laughs> yeah. later. Um, you have to be yeah. quick. People, people don't want to. It's not easy to get people to if you money. You know, yes. um, uh, you get a rock. All right, so I was yeah. um, just half set. Yeah. Oh, had a question. Yes. So you know, like for the news, like for the PNG example. So how how did they generate money from it? From this? How do they generate money? I guess the same thing. You have advertisers on Facebook Live, yeah. and it's really proving to their advertisers that people are watching. Mm. And also, th there was the sort of almost back aspect of it, if we don't do it now, we'll be behind the scene. Right now, they are so far ahead of everyone, everyone, it's, it's amazing. So whatever monetization is out there, they're ready to, to strike. I think the fact, because I get their alerts, you see, and I can watch PNG News from Malaysia, which I do. Um, I just find that amazing. I, I don't care about PNG news very much, but because it's there and it's fascinating, and, I, and I, I'm a Pacific person, I go, okay, I'll watch this. Can you imagine how many other people do the same thing? If you have an innovative product that you've got out there before everyone else, it's, I, I, I can imagine as time goes on, I'll actually go, oh yes, I really like, I wonder what happened to that story last night. I'll look at it again. You know, so the next night you're there and you keep coming back, Facebook Analytics tells people that you've got people watching you in Malaysia, in London, in, you know, New York. I just think it's the same product. You haven't made another product. All you've done is, is, is monetize, well, multi-platform, monetize, but going back again another step, all you've done is make sure that the way the news is collected can easily go out on Facebook. And that's where the changing the mindset of the staff came in. Because you know where we saw um, Peter O'Neill come out when he, 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 he'd just done the most amazing thing and cross hoodwinked everyone in Parliament, right? So it comes out like this, and they put a camera, and a, a, not a camera, a mobile phone in front of him, and he goes out live to everyone on Facebook and on the you know, on TV. And so, what's got to happen to, for that to happen? Well, someone's got to be there ready to stop him and ask the questions with the mobile phone. They've got to be connected up. People have to be ready to take it. Someone's got to be in the studio to say, hold the news report, we're going live in here. So it's, you've got a bit of liaison has to happen, but they were ready for it, they'd trained for it, they'd thought about it, and it was about, that was about two and a half months after he had this first epiphany about what he could do. 
So it was mainly training the staff. Initially, sometimes he would say it didn't go that well, but then someone would work out and oh, we could do that, and then someone else would come in. So you saw Corinne's presentation this morning, and it was like letting people learn along the way. Yeah, we could do this, and then someone in you know master control would say, and we could do that. And then for this one amazing announcement, they were there, and they were ready to exploit it. And then they just kept on going. And you get that kind of expertise, and it continues to improve. This is... I don't know if this is the forum, uh, forum Wendy. Um, I was thinking, listen, post-disaster, disaster, which um, structure is uh, usually uh, up first? Is it digital? Is it radio? I don't really don't it's know. It's radio, and sometimes uh, is everyone nodding here? Please feel free. Okay. Disaster, disaster news, yeah. disaster relief. Because here you have cyclones that literally flatten entire countries or entire mm -hmm. islands, yeah. and all these guys know this. Yeah. Um, radio, but see if the infrastructure is down, like in Vanuatu, cyclone Pan. It was a full 24 hours before international teams got those transmitters up. Um, does anyone want to join in here about yeah, what yeah. would be first up? I, yeah. I, I would agree for, for, for that still uh, in, in, uh, in this scenario, the traditional platform wins because of the credibility of the digital platform. Hmm. Because, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the journalism aspect has moved a lot to, to digital, but because then news like that, you need a credible platform which you know that somebody already checked the news, that it is true, yeah. it doesn't cause uh, panic within the country. So, you know, it's people still have that trust for radio to come up with those kind of news. Except yeah. if, the, if the infrastructure's down, which is what happens with the cyclone here, I'm not yeah, saying so anywhere else in the, the world. Yeah, the like... Yeah, <laughs> well, there's no, there is no yeah. television. People have no houses. Uh, radio, the transmitters are down. I guess Facebook isn't it's out there, is it? it it's going to be radio. From the, from the, from the broadcaster's Facebook. Mm. So you like it, you know? Yeah, and yeah. even here in some ways, an example was Site Lake Gita yeah. last year. So there was no TV, <coughs> but it was um, online. So we could still access online. So that, so that was something mm. different. And then here they've also just, um, with aid from Australia, they've just up, um, upgraded um, all the gear, te technology gear and stuff at, um, to a, a, a piece to be able to, in cases of disaster that they have, you know, like a plan A, B and C, if the transmitters come down, they can move to the next one and the next plane. So there's all that. But so we have, Cyclone Gita was an example. We couldn't put anything to ear, even our radio station, because everything was just down. But we could still um, use online, so as long as we had, um, you know, the, the phones were charged, then we could still... So Facebook, Facebook would actually be the first thing that was up in that scenario. Yeah, so for that one, yeah. we use Facebook. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There's your answer, you see. I mean, these guys actually know what to do, um, because they know the restrictions when there's a, when there's a cyclone. That's really interesting. God. So much, so much in this. Great, thank you so much. We have to go downstairs. Okay, so before we go downstairs, because before I let you up, I was actually planning to lock the door. Actually, yeah, but since you know we, we we have so many things happening at the same time, so let me just recap our roadmap. So we are here. So we are halfway through. Yeah, we are halfway through our workshop. When we come back, I'll do my sharing, and then uh, we will go right into throwing you into the sea and see whether you swing or not. <laughs> so now we are going into my sharing session, okay, before we do the hardcore work, which you will do later on. Okay, so uh, uh, sharing uh, from traditional platform to digital. So I think I have... Uh, have shared here and there uh, the beginning okay uh, so this is where 
this is the timeline of my career in, in the media. So I started off with the TR, the Women Empowerment TV program, uh, journalistic, producing, um, putting out content for women on TV. So um, for Malaysia, that program was very revolutionary. Even for me, as a young woman, I just graduated from university, and you know, I wasn't really sensitized to feminism. Uh, but the program, you know, got me really into women issues as well because I learned from the program along the way. So I've interviewed. Um, communities like the LGBTs uh, and how it impacted uh, women and uh, women drug addicts were in rehab center and one of the things that was really really uh, historical was uh, the fact that the, the TV show uh, spoke about period period for period which no other TV stage, uh, which no other program talked about. And you know, in Malaysia being an Asian country, period is a, is a taboo. Uh, so, um, uh, so basically that session was then uh, sponsored by a sanitary pet company called Cotex. Do you use Cotex here yeah, in Malaysia? Yeah, yeah okay. So previously, uh, Cotex was trying to penetrate into the market. And they came to Malaysia, and you know at that time the TV was really restrictive, okay, restrictive. So you can't even show any advertisement on sanitary pad, okay. So it's really bizarre because it's a normal human being. We go through that every single month, but you just can't talk about. Period. Uh, so when we presented the the show, it was branded content where we talk about <coughs> how uh, you know period also impact men in our lives, and they also should take uh, a knowledge about it. And you know that's when uh, subtly context come in within the content, and within that five years, I think they became the number one sanitary pad uh, brand in Malaysia. Yeah. But, however, because the program is no longer there, yeah, because it's, uh, you know, uh, it's, it, it went on for 14 seasons. Uh, so one season is 13 episodes. So can you imagine how many episodes and I actually hosted the program for 10 years. So that was my first introduction into the media landscape. Uh, and then after that, because being the curious person that I am, I just like, I need to do more. Uh, in the media, uh, so I, I wrote. I wrote a little bit. I tried my hand on writing some dramas, and then that's when I got into radio. So the first station that I worked for was Red FM. Uh, it's a bilingual station, a bilingual station. So which means that in the same bandwidth, we spoke English and Malay, like interchangeably. And then after that, uh, a new radio station. These are all commercial stations. Uh, and in 2006, when Hot FM, Hot FM is one of the um, major bro private broadcasters in Malaysia, owned by Media Prima Berhad, so they wanted to open a Malay station. They never had radio before, it's always the TV stations. It was TV3, TV 9, and TV7, Channel 8, and then they wanted to expand into radio because they couldn't uh, gather anymore. It, they, They've optimized the revenue channel of TV. So this is another area where they could get revenue. So I joined that station. I was an announcer. And then after that, I moved on to management. I was also the music director. And I became a researcher for the station. I worked there for eight years. And then uh, another radio station was, uh, uh, was about to be set up. You know, that was in 2014. 2014. So, uh, they, you know, I've always loved doing all everything from scratch, and it's really exciting. So uh, I was being pulled into the team. So that's when I've also learned how to set up a radio station from scratch. Because for Hot FM, it was already all set up. I just came in and hello, my name is Tini. Yeah, yeah, I just <laughs> I just became the announcer. So with I for you FM, because it was naturally a career growth for me. Uh, you know, I didn't want to be an announcer for the rest of my life. You know, I thought that this would be something uh, additional for, for, for my knowledge. So I went into the setup. Uh, that's when I learned about transmitters and the towers. 
and uh, how you need to climb the towers to actually physically put the transmitters out. Um, <coughs> dealing with regulators, with our multimedia uh, commission, yeah, multimedia and yeah, communication, yeah, uh, regulators, and then. Um, and when you have a station that's being set up, you know, for it to be sustainable, then you need to make it revenue, uh, revenue driven. So then we had to sell the station packages, airtime. I also did training, so that's when I got uh, interested into training because uh, throughout my career, anybody that's just being hired, you kind of like train them on the go. Yeah, so you know, I did some training for the analysis and uh, do audi auditions and search. And that's the whole 18, 18, so 2004, yeah, four, 14, 15 years. Uh, so I've been in the media. So uh, last year, uh, I decided to move into my own channel. So the, okay, I'll just tell you a bit of history. Uh, because I for your fan was government funded. So last year, Malaysia went through a historical moment where for the first time in 60 years, a new government was appointed because the previous government lost its election. Lost election. So, you know, it's a total change uh, in government. So, because it had the grant from the previous government, so usually... Now, I can really talk openly about this because it, it's the truth and it has already happened. Uh, that the new government always wants their own initiative. So in the, uh, when a new government comes in, they need to look at everything else that they need to prioritize. So hence, uh, you know, while, while waiting for them to sort of clear up or decide what they wanted to do, uh, that station was then uh, didn't have direction as well. Yeah, so that's when I thought, okay, you know what, I need to restructure and relook at um, how I want to move forward and uh, as I mentioned in the teaser earlier on naturally I could leave and join another broadcasters but I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to set up my own channel because in Malaysia the infra has been you know for the past five six years the government has been putting in a lot of infrastructure for broadband and for the bandwidth so you know we've got a strong uh, strong players uh, of internet and uh, broadband suppliers and telcos <coughs> as well. So hence, then, ding, okay, you know what, let's give this a try, you know, uh, and I did. Uh, we launched this channel in July uh, 2018 last year, so it's just over a year now, and one of the reasons I think apart from sharing with you all the facts here, you see, um, there are 30 32.6 million people in Malaysia in 2018 and it's growing, right? And out of that, 23 million users are Facebook users. So that makes it about 60-70% of the people. So they are on Facebook. So you know, some people have asked me why Facebook. So this is one of the reasons because already available catchment is on Facebook. Yeah? So. And uh, we've also thought about creating our own platform, like an app. But when you have an app, you also have to spend money on marketing it. And you got to get people to sign in. You know, if you don't market it, people don't know. You know, say if I call it like the teeny app, like the teeny who, but people would know <coughs> Facebook better. So it's, it's a lot more uh, cost effective to just use Mark Zuckerberg's platform for now. <laughs> For now, so because there are available catchment there, and in Malaysia as well, um, you know, because I've been in the traditional medium, uh, the radio and TV, we also see a a prevalent changing landscape of media consumption. So this is how it looks like on our public transport. Uh, yes. That everybody's uh, not mm -hmm. talking to each other, so they are actually uh, watching everything on mobile. So, yeah. And I, I think it's uh, it's pretty similar, just everywhere, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the problem is then because then people are not consuming content uh, on the traditional platform. So then I think we have discussed this a little bit about the revenue and the ratings of the station. Uh, and then people are moving into mobile. So what we thought would be 
because in Malaysia, I think globally as well, when we want to consume content, say, about Malaysia, when I Google it, the first page will be a, a, a Malaysian content coming from foreign source. Like if you want to go for a holiday, you type, there's another, there's a, a quite nice island uh, in Malaysia, it's called Pulau Perhentian, you know, it's an island. It will get it from TripAdvisor, it will be the first one. And then it will be like some blogger from the UK who's been there and he writes about his trip there and then so on and so forth. So local content is scarce. Somebody who speaks local or write it because we speak Malay, okay, that's where uh, most of our, the people in Malaysia speak, so we, have, we speak in English and Malay, so the native, uh, the national language <coughs> is Malay. So it's very hard to find Malay language content. So we decided it was a conscious decision to have a channel that is in Malay, to cater to the gap of the foreign content uh, and our local content, okay, and also the community, I, I underline the community because then the Facebook creates a community because they, not only you get to engage with your audience, but your audience gets to engage with each other. Yeah, so sometimes in the comment, when you see like the comment, they don't say hi to you, but they say to, hi Michael, yeah, it's good to see you here, you know, like they start <coughs> a conversation with each other. And we wanted to focus on local interests. Yeah, we wanted to local, uh, to create that community within the local interest. Okay, so this is also another reason. Uh, first, we can't afford to have the satellite own server, own setup box, own portals. It's, it, it requires a lot of investment. Only the big, big station, big players can do that. But as content creator, I mean, it is myself and I have another two partners, so we are three founders there. Um, then we put out a case where this traditional media channel, which you can see that already if you plus satellite server, setup box and portals if we want to do on our own, the amount of it versus using Facebook or IG or YouTube, it's almost zero. So you just need to have a password and a login, and you can already use it. But the only <coughs> disadvantage, but it's all right, it's okay, you just have to do risk management. One day Mark Zuckerberg says, I'm tired of Facebook, let's close it. It's like you have your 200 videos already there, and like, no! Okay, so you just have to ensure that you uh, put out your assets uh, and save it in either a hard drive or put it on other platforms. Yeah, so yeah. So that's when the decision was clearly here. So I'm just going to show you a snippet. Uh, it's a promo of, uh, to give you a feel of uh, the channel. Yeah. My partner is one of the hosts because he is the he and she, the other two partner. So I do more on the strategy and the business development side of it. Uh, but we also invite other hosts to be part of the channel. So the channel envisioned to be 
a channel where it is personality driven and it is niche content driven because how the tradition, traditional platform works, like for example if you have a TV station, right? So it will cater the whole 24 hours for a, a different type of content. So it becomes like a, like a, almost like a everything, like a salad bowl. Yeah, so in the morning you have a, a news, re like current affairs type, and then and after that in the, slightly in the afternoon will be cooking shows, and then they have dramas, you know, you have your Filipino or Spanish drama that comes out, and then evening there'll be like children cartoon, and then it goes into news again. So that's the linear traditional method. But for digital, the same methodology cannot be applied because it is catering to interest. So say for example, if you like cooking, you can't wait for to watch cooking just at 10 o'clock on your TV station and then after that, you know, like, you gotta wait for that. So, but if you create a digital, you have the opportunity to have a, a whole channel just on cooking, a whole channel on travel, a whole channel on biz and tech, and people can consume that every, whenever they want, yeah? So, yeah, so, this is some of the statistics or the online numbers. <coughs> because it is Facebook, you save your time on insights. So, you know, when I did radio, we have to wait for the Nielsen, or now it's GFK, radio measurement, and also for TV's radio measurement. So you, you pay a lot of money for this research company. But this one, if you have Facebook, just click insights and you can see. You can see. So I, I have derived this from Facebook, so collectively, so we have broadcasted 250 live videos on our channel in the past one year, and because it is live, you can actually do it like every day, you know, because it's just there, yeah. So that's why when people say, so how do, you do, how do you do so much within one year? Because it's live, you know, so you can, it's, and, and for digital platform, it's just about churning content. You can't take too long to make everything perfect. You can't wait too long and keep it before you broadcast it because the audience are just hungry to consume content. So collectively, uh, 12 million people have watched our channel. And on an average, 600,000 uh, people watch it every month because the video is just there. You know, when you watch TV or listen to the radio, it's like, oh, sorry, see, so got excited. Uh, so uh, it disappears unless you save it and then you want to give it to client. Client say, can I listen to my commercial? And then you have to like save it and you send it to them. But if we have client, we can just say, go to our Facebook. You can watch the whole show there. You can even share it. Yeah. Um, the statistics because it is Malay language, so. Um, we target people who could speak Malay. So predominantly it's in Kuala Lumpur, Johor, it's a small state in uh, Malaysia. And, but we also have numbers all around the, the world. Male and female, it's about balance. But female more, because uh, female are more participative. Whereas male, they are more passive viewers. Okay, so age group 18 to 34. So you can get all these reports. Just, just click, yeah. So these are our programs, our segments that we have already established for the past one year. So if you ask, we go live every day with different programs. So our, our highest rating would be the celebrity uh, shows because Malaysians are very celebrity entertainment driven. So you know we have to somehow balance it out as well with uh, the, what the audience wants. So, the artist Masobile segment can garner up to 200k views. Okay, we had the cooking show. You saw that snippet just now. Uh, so this is this is the Bilik Kluar Bilik. Is where we go and cover events. Sometimes we have organization that organizes say exhibitions. This is particularly for the Malaysian Property Expo, and they they help. Uh, and they wanted, you see, 15,000 people came to the outside of KL who is not able to come for the expo, so they came to the live. 
our traveler went to, to Saudi to do uh, to showcase the journey of a uh, of pilgrim. Yes. Yeah. Pilgrim. Islamic pilgrim. Islamic, 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 Islamic pilgrim. And uh, it, it was a travel agent that came to us and they wanted to promote their pilgrim packages. And then I said, you know, if you just sit here in the studio and talk about your fantastic packages and what you'll do, mm, I think it's not going to work out. You gotta bring us there. And they did. So we went last March to do the whole shoot uh, on that. Okay, uh, my, one of my partners, because he's uh, kind of like a rock enthusiast, he hosts a rock show uh, on Saturday nights. And this is a business <coughs> show because entrepreneurship is, is, is growing in Malaysia. So we work with uh, a government agency, MDEC, Malaysian Development, a Digital Economy, yeah, Malaysian Digital Economy Corporation, and we broadcast live eight episodes of entrepreneurship program talking about the issues of uh, being an entrepreneur. You know, like the funding, the hardship, can husband and wife become business partners, you know, stuff like that. So those are uh, the six shows. So uh, technically, we are live every day, so this is six shows. <laughs> so only like maybe a Sunday uh, off, yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned, because we just need to churn content out. So I'm just going to share with you a, a, a sample of, this is where we live on Facebook, using our phones, and it's outside uh, at a very famous uh, food court area, you know, where you have all the uh, stalls selling food. So, you know, uh, in Malaysia, Stalls are very popular <laughs> and they go on 24 hours. So here's like 5 o'clock, so everything's so quiet, you know? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, good job. Uh, okay, your first Malaysia celebrity crush. I need this. This line is getting a lot So what do? Hey, my man. So she's a famous actress. Uh, <laughs> So this is during yeah, our tour. So we brought us on this shop. And then we open up the stage. And then when we're done, we close it again. And then we move to, for, to another location. So we actually went 14 locations around Malaysia uh, as part of our promotional campaign. Yeah. So, can, I, can I just ask a question? I don't quite understand the relationship between the two sides of the... Oh. Yes, yeah, so he, they are at the same place. Yeah. Yeah, so he, he is... So you've got two cameras? Yeah, two cameras. Okay. Yeah, so we, we will go through this uh, during the gadget uh, session. So there's two cameras. So because then they are on the truck on the yeah. stage, right? And we also wanted to showcase the fact that there are so many people also watching this. So one camera is on them, and one camera is on him, also showing the rest. So... And I guess if I knew the language, I would understand that. It's just without an establishing yeah. shot, you can't see the two. But, yeah. then, but if you knew the language, yeah. you'd know that. Yeah, so this is actually an hour show, but I just... Yeah. took a snippet because I wanted to show the fact that you can do a Facebook Live that is capable of having the lower third, mm. the logo, yeah. the Facebook Live, and the split screen. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just a boring little square. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So you can actually do that with just uh, your phones uh, with the software, uh, free ah, software. okay. And what's at the bottom? I'm sorry, I can't see. Yeah, I know, I know. We should make it uh, bigger. So that's our website. Yeah, that's our, our social media. Oh, okay. And that's a phone number that you can call okay. as well to like, Hello, I'd like to speak to Fasha Sanda. Her name is Fasha Sanda. Uh, I'd like to ask her. So you can also do that. Uh, and that's all using an app that uses Facebook Live or that's right. vice versa. That's right. That's right. Wow. 
Well, because that's <laughs> impressive. <laughs> it's yeah. like for, TV. For, for TV. Yeah. It's like TV. Yeah. 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 So that's a key. And you have a logo. And, and Facebook Live, where you want to tell them what they're watching it on, you know that it is live. So how many people do you have to have on the ground just to operate this small yeah. thing? Okay, so there will be two camera guys two phones, operating uh, two phones. We are, we are on iPhone 8, iPhone 8, okay, um, uh, plus, iPhone 8 plus, the bigger one, iPhone 8 plus. And this is called, this software that we use because it is compatible to iPhone is called Switcher Studio. Switcher Studio. Switcher Studio, yeah. Uh, Switcher Studio. I think it's pretty popular because a lot of, uh, even the big stations are using it. Switcher, Switcher Studio. So the Switcher Studio connects to, we use, so the gadgets that we use are one iPad, two iPhone plus, 8 Plus, and one MacBook. That's all. So the iPad downloads the uh, the, um, the iPad controls the switcher, so you can see the different angles and different facade of the uh, camera. So somebody needs to operate that, and it, how it is in, it interlinks within the other two phones is through the connection, which is either your Wi-Fi or your 4G. Yeah, so you connect that and then then you log in from the switcher, you log in your Facebook uh, login. Is that on the MacBook or the iPad? No, that it's on the iPad. That's on the iPad, yeah, it's on the iPad. So you log in there and then you go live from there. And yeah. what does the MacBook do? The MacBook, okay, so you don't have to have the MacBook. The MacBook is additional because it is a lifestyle entertainment channel. So, so sometimes because, you know, okay, this is also the thing about life. So if you live for an hour, which means the presenter, whoever is handling the show needs to constantly be on like, you know, a, a, a presenting mode. Yeah. So to give them a break, you know, instead of sometimes putting in commercials mm -hmm. or videos, we just then let the viewers watch whatever that is on mm -hmm. it while having the song there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Song, so you song. Put music, music, yeah. Song, okay. <coughs> music. Oh, you could also put sweeper, mm -hmm. voice sweeper. So where do you um, get your put up your logo and the keys? Is it from your MacBook or is it it's from from the iPad. iPad? From the iPad. Yes. So what does the MacBook do? Not all that much. Yeah, it's just the music part because oh, we don't okay. want to oh, mess that. It's just music. the music. Yeah, but so it's at, it's optional. You don't have to have it if it's going to be. You know, sometimes when you do a show, I don't know, but in Malaysia, this is um, this is this is pretty what pretty. This is what they are used to usually. You know, like sometimes you don't have to put background music. Actually, you know, like for news, you don't have to no, background no. music, but you know, uh, like for lifestyle shows, yes. normally you have that little bit of a white and, noise. And so, how many that. people? You've got one, two, three, four. four. You've got four performers there. So, so, so the so we are talking about the back, the front liner or the back liner. So the back. Let's talk about the people yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. So there's two camera operator, mm -hmm. the switcher operator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, an audio guy. Yes. yes, an audio guy. Because audio is very, very, very important. And you can see that they are using the wireless mic. So there is a small mixer of 816 channel, okay, which goes into the iPad. Uh, it all com comes on control. Yes, yeah, so the uh, iPad is the controller. So it goes into the iPad and then the voice goes inside the mixer and then it goes out on Facebook. So and I guess the switch is actually the director. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. We uh, we actually have a floor manager if we are outside. So like so this. Fifth person. Yes, the fifth person. Additional, if we have even like this outside because the switcher can't mm -hmm. coordinate. Like, hey, host. It's your turn because the video is finished, so it's going to be the producer, floor manager that's like, okay, it's your turn, and then like, if we play a video, then you know, we switch it how, how long more, um, you know, and then you'll inform the host to be on standby, yeah. So.
And I guess some, um, you know, you need someone to keep all the, because people, you're out there, you know, you're fairly vulnerable. Uh, you need someone to stop people from walking into frame and um, and all that sort of thing. No. So that's that floor manager. So what we do is usually. Um, uh, the technical people <coughs> take the a corner, so they want nobody's going to, yeah, uh, nobody's going to walk over them or disturb them. Uh, and um, yeah, usually we we don't get fanatics there. Yeah, so that is probably the least. If I had to take someone to do that, I'd probably get an intern that I don't have to pay <laughs> because it's part of the. Yeah. <laughs> Their program that they are the training. Yeah. So, so minimal four crews and two hosts. Mm -hmm. We can run a show, but you know if it's an interview like that, then it's one additional person. So about seven. Yeah. However, okay, I have another sample that I want to show you because this is the full fledge. And can I ask one more question? Uh, planning. How much planning did that one hour take? Okay, so we have a like a usual uh, a rundown. Yeah. Okay, so we have to plan this at least two to three days ahead anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're talking about planning, then we have to lock the location. So that is the producer's job to call and say, hey, can we broadcast there? And then we're bringing a truck, a two-ton truck. So now all that have to happen before. So taking into consideration all the permission has been done so if we are live we usually live at <coughs> night which is nine o'clock we are all normally already on standby call time at five so five everybody comes in people set up and then because then six o'clock they have <coughs> dinner and then we do a brief at seven and then we do a test run at about seven seven thirty and then from eight to nine o'clock nothing happens everybody just be on standby and then Five minutes before nine, everybody takes their place, and it's five, four, three, two, one. Just like TV. <laughs> yeah, just like TV. Yeah. That's a good question. Like we had some Facebook live streamings to some of the events from FBC, but our problem was sometimes when there was live music, like when there was, for example, we had this kind of um, competition going, and in the breaks they would have a have a dance performance, but they had to mute the audio. Otherwise, they would uh, cut off the stream, like Facebook, because of the copyrighted music that the, the, yeah. the music, the band, would, uh, the dancers would be using. Yeah. So that would, and people started to complain, we can't hear the music, yeah. you know, yeah. and then we had to type, okay, due to copyright issues. Yeah. And uh, so how do you manage that, or do you just use music that is uh, authorized or yeah. handled? Very good question, Fabian. Thank you so much. I almost forgot about that. If I check my work email, which my the Facebook is linked, I have at least 50 from Facebook and the YouTube that says copyright claim. <laughs> copyright claim, copyright claim, copyright claim. So it was an issue for us because yes, they muted everything. If people can't hear. So from that learning, okay, this is a, this is a trick, okay? This is a trick. You can't play Katy Perry or Justin Bieber or the international songs that uh, uh, has a very strong label. So what we normally do is that it is safe to play just instrumental. Mm -hmm. Just play instrumental if you have to, okay? Uh, from the, the, the MacBook that you have, okay? But the safest, safest, safest thing is when we had this show, we had buskers. We had like a, a, a like a two two instrument people just on like a live show. So they either play a guitar and a kahoon. So like they just strum. There's no copyright there, but it just it provides that uh, music. <laughs> yes. Doesn't work in some. So <laughs> if the dance did, like yesterday, yesterday we could Facebook live yeah. that without being muted because they were yeah because yeah, that they they right are. belongs so to you. Cool. Belongs to you, belongs to you. Yeah. So the dancers have to take either find a, a song because that hap okay, it happens. We did, we did a Facebook Live for a fashion show. So, a fashion show. So, the choreographer of the fashion show chose like five, six songs, which are normally 
commercial. Yeah. So I'm like, we can't play this song because then, you know, they'll be muted and then your model will have to walk without any song. So we changed that to a upbeat song, but it is, um, it is, uh, it is no singing, you know, doesn't belong to any artist, number one. Or number two, if you Google, you can get copyrighted uh, music. Yeah, so I usually, I mean, some of the websites that I like to go to is Band Sound. Band Sound, B E N S O U N D. Band Sound. Band Sound. B E N S O U N D. And then YouTube has a library, yes. full of library, where you can just use all the songs which they have uh, cleared. So you can do that, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to put this later so that I can take notes because there is usually a. So this is an example of a, of a full-fledged, the maximum where we can go. Number one, it is outside, so there are external factors. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, you know, we use the switcher studio, which could do the split screen, and then the, put on the low set and the logo. But there's also another scenario, which uh, some cases, you know, when, when you don't have either enough staff or enough crew or uh, something happens with the software you know like when you get everything prepared usually the technical is the one that disappoints you right so this next uh, video this next Facebook live is Facebook live but it's a lot more simpler and straightforward mm -hmm. it's also an event coverage we did this Because that's the internet connection. You can see the light. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. There. This is already uh, the MP, the movie version. But light there. Version. We work with the local, uh, with our tourism department. So Ministry of Tourism Malaysia engage us to broadcast the Malaysian Raya open house. So Raya is a big thing in Malaysia. So if you come to Malaysia for that one whole month, you won't be working. You just be going to corporates. Uh, it's a festival, festies, festivity. So, so this is the, this is uh, was held at the uh, palace. The palace. So usually they will have RTM yeah. to broadcast. So it's a national broadcast. Yeah, so they will get the national broadcaster to do the crossover. So we go to the palace and see what's happening there. And then the yeah, presenter will be doing exactly what we did. Yeah, the, the, the two hosts. Uh, How many people watched you that day? Uh, I, I know your uh, Because, okay, I, because that was probably done during the weekend. Yeah. Okay, so timing also. It's very important looking at the day, and that was done during the day. Uh, on average, we can get about 15,000 people okay. on watching that. It's just that you're taking, you could be taking people from the national broadcast. So that's but they wasn't exciting. broadcasting. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they wasn't broadcasting that. So when we had the meeting with the ministry, and they said usually we will get uh, the national broadcaster to do this, but because we wanted the reach, so hence, um, there were other broadcasters there and we were the digital partner for this uh, event. Uh, and you can see that it was very challenging, this one, because the Wi-Fi was, the, the connection was unstable. That's number one. And then uh, our crew didn't have all the things that they needed. There wasn't enough plug points. Do you know, and when the Wi-Fi is not so good, then you can't, like the switcher and the phone, they're not talking to each other. So it's very straightforward, so you don't see the lower set, you don't see the logo, nice. and there's no split screen. Because that is just coming from one phone. So if you ask me, that's one phone, 
just doing that and then waiting and then you know move about and the audio because we had the plug point issue you know it's, 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 it's a big event so you know I guess they didn't really prioritize what we needed if you notice that we use a mic yeah I saw her holding it this mic directly connected to the phone and then she just go you can hear it's a little bit noisy and peak but so much better if you don't have it without mm. if you don't have it, it's yeah. going to be noisy you can't hear what she's saying and people are just not going to watch so it's better having it better having some like because at least you can hear what she's saying clearly yeah so that is a straightforward life without no software just direct which is also fine because at the end of the day it's the content yeah, yeah? But it's not a schmicko as the other one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the that the schmicko, the schmicko, schmicko, schmicko. Yeah, yeah, the schmicko, the schmicko. Ah, okay. So ah, uh, yeah. So two examples of outside broadcast. So oops, I just want to show you the one that we did in our studio. This is uh, it's basically like an office room in our small home studio. A lot more controlled because then you know you're not relying on outside Wi-Fi. You will re you're relying on the network uh, that is already in the house. Ah, nak simpan ni kan? Kita selalu pergi beli barang tu. Kita beli sana beli bayar tu kan? Switch here again. Sebelum bayar ni kita minta diskon. This is a financial literacy program to talk about his code. Yeah, that you can put his name there. Yeah, uh, this is a bit ugly. Uh, with switcher, you can choose. You can change the color. You can. It, it's a matter of taste. Uh, but I think my switcher operator at that time doesn't have so much. Uh, yeah. No, it's, um, it's already available with the switcher. You don't have to import. It's already there. It's already there. Yeah. It's a free software or you, you buy it? So it is free. Okay. The, it is free for seven days. And then after that, there's a premium. Uh, I, it, it's not a lot. I think, uh, I mean, for me, I, I think it's okay. Rather than if you're a broadcaster and you have to spend on the multi cam and all this big stuff. Uh, US dollar about thirty dollars a month. Yeah, it depends also if you wanted something else, and it will be a premium, premium, premium package. So, is there someone behind the camera? Um, how many people are on this side of them? On this side, so there will be the because it's two cam. Okay, so it's, this one yeah, is only two cameras. There's only one. Hello, Mr. Javad. You don't think you're gonna sneak in without us noticing? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome and thank you for joining us. So I was just talking about yeah. it. So uh, there's only one cameraman here, so you can minimize because the main camera is then put on a tripod. Yes, there was the one in front. Yeah. So and then the there's tripod. a cameraman getting the side shot. Yeah, so you saw that cameraman was doing his, uh, uh, a pen. Yeah. So that, that main one is here, and then the camera guy, there's one just, because the room is so small, so there's no need for us to have two cameramen, you just put one, uh, one tripod So it's just hand holding now, yeah. and the other one's uh, on the tripod. Yes, that's right. Because the hand holding sort of works, because it makes it more immediate, doesn't it? Gives it interest. Yeah, so the, the handheld is not handheld, handheld like that. So there is a stabilizer. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's, it's, it's on a gimbal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on a gimbal, yeah. or it doesn't have to be because uh, iPhone 8 Plus already comes with a stabilizer. Even I'm using 7. 7 has a stabilizer embedded, wow. so you get that smoothness. Anyway, so it it's trouble. <laughs> so this is good enough. If you have an iPhone, this is good enough. 
this is good enough because you don't want to be holding the phone too much but this is good enough if you have and you just shoot yeah yeah this is good enough but I because I'm I'm an uh, I'm an iPhone I use iPhone so but if but I know the Androids has also all this advancement. Uh, but if it does, if you don't have the stabilizer already built into the phone, then you can get a gimbal, mm -hmm. right? So the gimbal just makes it smooth, smooth yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So hence, I th I'm not an iPhone ambassador, but yeah, since everything's inside there. Also, Switcher Studio is iPhone friendly. Uh, if you are on Android but have not used it, uh, people have recommended Periscope. Oh, still. Periscope, yeah. Wow. And uh, OBS, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So, okay. uh, just, just to see the uh, to see in number of hands, uh, how many, I mean, what phones are you guys using? Because this, I want to know, like, so that when we do our Facebook Live, then I can uh, advise accordingly as well. Mm -hmm. So, Android? Android, okay. iPhones? Okay. And others? <laughs> Is it you? <laughs> Can you put that in your head? It's Your Android, okay. So most of you are on Android, but it's, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Because you know what? At the end of the day, it's the content. Mm -hmm. It's the content, no matter what. It's yeah. the content. Yeah? So I, I can do a split screen, I can do four screen, but if the content is shitty, I mean, <laughs> right? Yeah, because it's just a distraction, putting in the lower tip and all that, yeah. But the lower tip, this is the monetization part. Yes. So you can see this. This is not here for free. This is charge. If they didn't pay, this, no, no, no. So that's where you gain the revenue from. Yeah. Yeah, I'll talk about revenue in a in a different slide. Okay, so yeah, this is the slide, the monetization slide. So some of the ways that we monetize the Facebook content, uh, and I know Kareen spoke about subscription, uh, and subscription model doesn't work in Malaysia. Recently, I went to a talk to a digital. Um, fast forward digital conference uh, where iFlix, iFlix uh, was also presented and they said that they started off iFlix. iFlix is like Netflix. Do you know there's like the stream, uh, stream platform and they said they started with the subscription content and it didn't work out because nobody wanted to pay subscription and now they have moved to a Spotify model which is there's 10 content free for you, but we have advertisements. And if you wanted that for free, you need to pay 10 ringgit, for example. Okay, so that worked out better for them because when they first started, you know, they weren't making any revenue at all. So for our model, because it's on <coughs> Facebook, so it's like Netflix, they have their own that platform. So what we try to maximize is also the branded content. Uh, so one of the ways is this, okay, so all the green colors are the text, the platform monetization, okay, our platform monetization comes from the content going up on YouTube. So after we Facebook Live, the one that you saw, the exact same content, we download it and upload it back on YouTube. We do this for two reasons. One is a backup. Yeah, one is a backup. So if something happens to Facebook, I can still have my content back on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And also, because we are a small setup, uh, we just wanted our YouTube to also have content. And to create a different content for YouTube is very tiring. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we just duplicate. And then we realize that Facebook uh, audience and YouTube audience are two different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're not the same. So some people follow us on Facebook, but they don't follow us. They don't subscribe to our channel mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So you have two different available um, uh, audience there. How do you record it when it's going out live? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, the switcher, which is the, oh, uh, the software, does it for you. Okay. So at the end of the live, it says what you want to do, delete or save onto your phone. So you choose save. Mm. So it goes into your phone, and then the same thing, you upload it back wow. on YouTube. Sure. So that switcher is worth its weight in gold. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for the switch, 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 for you, for them to put advertisements. You know when you watch, mm, skip right. four, three, two, one. Okay, but don't bang on it. The whole chunk belongs to them. They just probably give you two cents. <laughs> there you go. That's your monthly thingy. Mm. But it will grow. You just need to be patient. You'll grow because we just started. So I, I've chat almost every day in anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> Cents, US dollars. <laughs> yeah, so you know, for those, if you hear the stories about the YouTubers making millions, they have started six, seven years ago. They did build up their content right up to date. You know, what they, they tell you that they're making millions, but they didn't tell you what they did for the past seven years. Because to slog and do content every single day until, you know, that's the only thing that they do. They don't even go to the toilet. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a lot so of So how many work. subscribers do you have? Right now, about 19,000 subscribers okay. on the channel. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, hence, we, we started to monetize our content six months ago, mm -hmm. when we reached the 1,000. Took you six months, months to get there though. Well, actually, you know what, um, because we were so busy doing everything else, mm -hmm. we didn't realize we reached that 1,000 uh, mm -hmm. mark until just like one day I was just curious and saw that you know it was close to about 12,000 at that time and I'm like can I can I make money from this and then googled and then saw the requirement and then registered and then wait for waited for YouTube to come back because you have to apply and then after that they come back and say whether you yeah okay you know you can be on board so um, that's why we're a bit late on yeah yeah. So because we weren't going to me, we weren't thinking about the money at all. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So that's that's uh, platform monetization. Okay, content monetization. As you saw from the uh, from the financial literacy program, that was actually a client that wanted to create awareness about the product. So they are called Maxima Nutrition. They are a U.S. based company, and they have. Uh, Products like um, vitamins, uh, health drink, uh, but they didn't want to do a hard sell. We don't want to do a hard sell as well. Like, you know, bring my product. So they engaged five episodes with them, five sessions, talking about different things that enhances a person's well being. So we had a relationship episode, we had a financial literacy and then we had a, a power man uh, somebody who, uh, who participate come in to see how you can optimize and limit so the content are branded content so then they get the mention and then they get the logos and we throw in a contest as well at the end of the show so as and when we go we give a bit of product info and like oh, okay if you heard us earlier what is the name of that drink that can make you run for 10 hours? So they comment on the comment section and then we give away the uh, products to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are chargeable. So how we charge is uh, for like an hour content, so it's unlimited product placement, X amount, for the logo, X amount, for mention, X amount. Uh, for the contest is X amount, we then we post uh, the promo because we need to promote. Yeah, like two weeks before or one week you'll say, don't forget to watch the financial lit literacy show happening, blah, 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 blah. 
brought to you by Broga is charged. So you plus that up together. And here you go, Mr. Maxima. This is how much you have to pay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. On site event, you saw that with the oh, Malaysian Open House. Okay, so the ministry engage us and they pay for the airtime. So basically for us to do the coverage. So event on site event has been one of our best sellers because people do event, they spend so much money on event, nobody knows about this event, you know? So they've also thought about uh, people who are not within the city who can't participate. So you Facebook Live it. See, if you go to on our Facebook, you can watch the open house live. So even you in Fiji can watch how we celebrate our festivity. Yeah, so it's the reach. Platform campaigns. Sometimes they don't want live. The client don't want live. We don't want. We just want to create awareness. So this is done with a local drink in Malaysia. Uh, I think there are overseas as well. It's called Chat Time. It's the bubble tea. Oh, yeah. You know bubble tea? Yeah. You know chat time? You have chat time in Fiji? Yeah, okay. So chat time. <laughs> chat time came out with a uh, new drink. So it was um, it was syrup bandung and chendol. It's a lo it's a localized flavor. So they wanted to do a contest. So what we did is we promoted that drink, and then only for debilit users or followers or audience, we give them a promo code. Like Dibilek Cha Time. If you go there, you get two ringgit off. Oh. So what we do is, so that is chargeable, but the client wants sales. So people get the promo code. You know, it's just a promo code. So you just say <laughs> Cha Time Dibilek. Okay, you get two ringgit off. So they also, we also drive sales to their store. Okay. So those are currently what's how the company sustained. So, but these are the future manager monetization platform that we're looking at. Okay. Um, if you're familiar with Patreon, uh, we've not used it, but we are exploring on the concept because Patreon, as I mentioned, uh, Malaysia they don't want to pay for the content, but there will be some niche content that people are willing to pay for, and we notice gamers. Games, e-games is very big in Malaysia, and, uh, uh, in Fiji, e-games, you know, they call it e-games. Uh, actually, they don't do anything, they just sit and just play games. So there's no physical, uh, physical movement whatsoever. So there is a big community and they're willing to actually pay for their favorite gamer to just play the games. Yeah, if you check out YouTube, yeah, so so Patreon allows people to pay, similar to TikTok, the concept where you um, you give the rewards to the host, a tip, it's called tipping, okay? And we also see that if we want to do, or you want to do content that is like, for example, investigative journalism, you want to tie up with the client. Usually a client doesn't want to venture into edgy content like that because it tarnish or they, they have to keep their brand intact. So if you go into something controversial, like for example, Malaysian politics, all is controversial, right? And you want to do an investigative expose and you go to, um, yeah, you go to Faber Castell. Say, no way, you know, uh, because I need to keep my brand like wholesome. So, but there will be audience who are willing to pay. We want to know, like, really, what happens to that, to that corruption case. Or we want to know. So that's when the platform allows for people to log in. It's like crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they pay for that content. So that's that's in the plan. We have to have some uh, edgy, spicy content for that. And the other one is merchandising. So, you see, what I'm wearing is a channel t-shirt. It's not for sale, but soon it will be. <laughs> but not with this, not with this design, because this is clearly a branding. You know, I wear it because I'm like a walking billboard for my, for my brand, right? But it is potentially merchandising if the t-shirt is uh, a lot more looking like a fashionable type of clothing. And then you can see back for example, 
Here, everything is sellable. Do you like the plan? Click it and go to our e-commerce platform. Put it to your card, purchase out, and then we'll post it to you. But then we need to. But we need. But we need to. We need to produce this, or we get someone to produce it and label it. So everything that you see on screen, we can sell. <laughs> yeah, even you like this jumper? Yeah, yeah. Click, click, click. Goes to an e-commerce website. You pay, get away, and then you check out. And after three days, it's in your post. So that's one of the monetization uh, platform that we are looking at. It's not up yet because it's a whole different team. We need somebody to look at yeah. the merchandise. You need to talk to buyers, to factories, and you know, so at this point we just uh, here, just creating the content. Yeah, so we need, if we want to grow, that will be where we want to expand. Okay, so, any question? So how many people do you actually have working for you full time? Uh, none. Okay. So it's, it's full time. Yeah. The founders, me and my two founders. Yes. Um, we have uh, everyone else. The crew, especially, they are on freelance, because not because of anything. It's because in order for us to engage them into full time, we need to have more content. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to come and broadcast for one hour, I can't pay you an eight hour day work. So they are paid per day. They are paid per day, they are paid half day. So we have a pay day rate and a half day rate. So they come in because, you know, they just come in because everything has been signed, deal, and, you know, they just execute. Mm. So on the other hand, will be the pre-planning stuff. So we have one, she's not really full-time, but I would think that, uh, you know, she works for us about four times a week. Uh, so that is still on, like, on a contract basis. So see client uh, presentation close the deal I do that as well I see client I close the deal and then after that we talk about the content and then provide the client with rundown and then we pass it on to the producers is also on freelance because they are all waiting for for the content right so it's really chicken and egg it's really chicken and egg we want and you probably have about 20 people going through 20 people who work with you no. sometime or another? No, a maximum yeah. 10, including myself and the two hosts. Uh -huh. Yeah, maximum okay. 10. And the, and the two founders? And the two founders, including so them. Five. So there's three of us. Yeah. There's three of us. Yeah, but the two hosts? Yeah, they are also the hosts. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah. that's how we keep our course yeah, 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 yeah. low. <laughs> yeah. But we, so, so when we have clients like that, so then we pay everybody uh, what they should be paid yeah. because it's already accounted for mm -hmm. you know like when we charge client because if 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 my partner don't host it we have to engage someone outside we still have to pay that person so we put in host fees x amount okay uh and admin, admin fee x amount together with all that and then that's the pack that's the package that's been sold to the client yeah so far last year alone we had 60 clients that have taken up different things, either in these event coverage, branded content, contests, social media, you know. Um, so our content is a lot lifestyle, if you can see, but if you're operating in the newsroom, it's just a similar methodology, but it's just different content, that's it, which everything that I've shared today can be applied to your content. <coughs> You know, and uh, you ca I can tell you in Malaysia, uh, once upon a time people might think news is boring, but news is like, like fighting together with the star search. Mm -hmm. The rating is almost equivalent to the star search, yeah? Mm -hmm. There's so much things happening in Malaysia. Uh, so yeah, uh, what else did I wanted to share? Okay, so that's about the channel. So anything else that is not addressed. Okay, good. 
because now, <laughs> now what I would like to move on to how you can uh, you can try and test and have a taste of Facebook Live. I don't think for this session we're not doing the switcher because then I you probably have to download. But you can. Uh, I think I have it. Open broadcaster somewhere. You can try. If you're on iPhone, you can try this. And if you're not, if you're on Android, you can play around because you need to play around with it first. Mm -hmm. So, so I want to I want to go on to the basic, the basic of the Facebook Live first, without the split screen, without the yeah. It's just because before all that happens, the content and the presentation needs to be there. Yeah. So. so you can always start simple and later complexify correct. and get more gear and all that kind That's of thing. That's correct. So start start small and then you know start small and then you know when you're confident, okay the, the content is, is good, I'm confident to go live and how do I enhance this? Okay, I will I will want to do the logos and the split screen and then you add on, you add on. Because what I realize when people uh, uh, some people have come to approach me, uh, but they start big. So we have this, we have this. We brought like a, we we have bought a cameras uh, that is HD 8K, and you know I said uh, I, I I and I I don't know how to react because when I tell them that it's just on iPhone 8 Plus, <laughs> then <laughs> then. Um, I, I, I don't know whether they're disappointed or they're shocked, so, but that was, that's the honest truth. Every single content that you watch are on <coughs> broadcast on a phone. Yeah. Yeah. So people, when people do that, they buy everything and they say, how do we do Facebook Live? And I said, forget about those. This is all you need. They really get disappointed. And they, you know, it's like, especially those from traditional production houses, because they used to do big camera, and they used to have 20 people on set. Yeah, and for them to like minimize it to two to three, it's like, are you sure? Yeah. Uh, so the mindset is, the mindset change is also quite a challenge. But, yeah, but yeah. you know, why do you, um, so why, why do you prefer iPhone 8? Okay, because of its because of its compatibility to the Switcher Studio, that's number one. Uh, if I have extra cash, I would buy iPhone X because that's the latest. <laughs> but uh, I, iPhone our iPhone eight is not broken yet, so we just use it. You know, so we'll Although maximize iPhone, it. iPhone uh, SE, some some say it has a very good camera. Have you heard about that on iPhone SE? iPhone SE is, is it is is must be six SE or seven SE? Yeah, probably seven. SE. Yeah, so that's like uh, so eight is a slightly yeah. uh, newer version so of the seven. SE would be, okay. Yeah, so um, SE, uh, but I don't know for some reason eight is a plus. It's, mm. They don't need to keep changing their name. Uh, but it's mainly yeah. because it's compatible with Switcher Studio. Yes, 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 Switcher Studio. Yeah. So far, uh, when I do my research, yeah. Switcher Studio the yeah. is the only one that's compatible. Because I tried, no, I tried. Um, it's an app, it's an app. So app, app for multi-camera for iPhone. Switcher Studio will come out and I can't find anything else. But if you Google apps, for multi-camera for Android, then I get Periscope and OBS. Yeah, I really, really encourage you to try both because you are on Android, and I would really, really appreciate some feedback if I could.